because you believe the lie, it's camouflage. I'm the world's most dangerous predator. Everything about me invites you in. My voice, my face, even my smell. As if I wouldn't need any of that. As if you could outrun me! As if you could fight me off. Greetings, guests. Welcome to the Patriarchy, where we explore cinema classics fueled by predictive Hollywood programming and unpack how our favorite characters in cinema got egg all over their faces. I am your commentator, Dom, and tonight we're unpacking Toxic Teen Love Stories starring Twilight. Girl meets boy, boy shows disdain, girl is intrigued, girl leans in more. Boy tells girl that he's a predator, boy says if you're smart you'd stay away from me. Girl says I don't care, I can change you, you won't hurt me. That's essentially the plot of this toxic teen love story Twilight. And I actually had a few other movies that I wanted to review under the toxic teen love story category, but there's just so many. So I've decided to turn this into a series. So subscribe and turn on your notifications to stay tuned and hear my commentary on classic teen romance movies that feature extremely toxic relationships and behaviors from some of our favorite teen rom-coms and coming of age stories. But we're gathered here today to talk about the toxicity of Twilight and how even though things may have worked out for Bella, they did get married and had a twisted little family. Young women really should proceed with caution and try not to lean into a relationship with a man who's clearly stating to stay away. It means if you were smart, you'd stay away from me. Okay, well, let's say for argument's sake that I'm not smart. So Twilight came to theaters in 2008 and is a vampire romance film based on the 2005 novels written by Stephanie Meyer. Today, we are focusing on the first installment when Edward Cullen, played by Robert Pattinson, and Bella Swan, played by Kristen Stewart, first meet as 17-year-old seniors attending high school in the small town of Forks, Washington. So the character of Bella, as shown in the movies, is the new girl in town. She's kind of ordinary, quiet, and timid. Her parents are both divorced, and she's finishing high school with total strangers, kids she doesn't know and hasn't grown up with, which isn't the ideal situation, but she does seem to make new friends quickly and does know at least one guy in town, and that's Jacob. But still, she's kind of ambivalent about Forks as she's used to sunny Arizona and Forks is cold, cloudy, and rainy. But back to the story, like most teenage girls, she's very much drawn to the mysterious, dark, and aloof nature of Edward Cullen. He sticks out like a sore thumb, not because he's captain of the football team or anything, but because he's kind of cold and standoffish. You know, your mood swings are kind of giving me whiplash. Edward is tall, attractive, pale, and upon first interacting with Bella in biology class, he's seemingly repulsed by her, warning sign number one. However, this act of him running away from her makes her even more intrigued. Like, why are you not fanboying over me like all of these other guys? I'm the new girl, right? And it doesn't help that he's there to save her multiple times from both a speeding van and a group of jackals. And after saving Bella from being hit by this van, she simply wants to know how he got to her so quickly. But red flag number two, he straight up gaslights her saying, don't you remember I was standing right next to you? I was standing right next to you, Bella. No, you were next to your car. And when that doesn't work, he refuses to explain himself, basically brushing her off. You're not going to let this go, are you? No. Well, then I hope you enjoy disappointment. 
yet after acting outwardly repulsed by Bella in biology, clearly gaslighting and lying to her about the van situation, and then brushing her off when she pressed on, Bella decides to do some research and still pursues him. You're beautiful. So Edward, although intrigued, doesn't want to get close to Bella because he knows who he is. I wanted to kill you. I've never wanted a human's blood so much in my life. But Bella goes after him. And young women, we have to stop doing this. There is definitely a push-pull dynamic in this relationship. And it's Edward who's pushing Bella away because he knows that he's a predator. And it's Bella that pulls him closer saying, come here, I'm just so confident that you won't hurt me. It's a very common trope in teen romance films of the past to watch young women literally playing with fire. The bad boy, wooing over the unattainable heartthrob. And I think this showed up a lot in older films because it's kind of playing out the fantasy for young women in real life, showing through cinema, hey, look, plain, boring, awkward girl, you too can get that mysterious, aloof, and cool guy. But how does it ever work out in real life? So let's move on to why Edward is intrigued by Bella. Is it because he finds her super charismatic and witty and enjoys deep conversations with her? No. Is it because she has that vampire look too, despite being from Phoenix? No. He's intrigued because his superpower is being able to read minds and he can't read hers. So he never knows what she's thinking. And because he can't read her mind, aka he can't easily manipulate her, he sees Bella as a challenge and that's why he's drawn to wanting her. Because at the start of the film, he's constantly trying to and frustrated that he can't read her. So as everyone knows, despite all of Edward's warnings. It means if you were smart, you'd stay away from me. And. I'm the world's most dangerous predator. Everything about me invites you in. Despite all of these warnings, Bella convinces Edward to be in a relationship with her. And she continues to display her lack of boundaries by being turned on by the little weird things that he does, like sneaking in to watch her sleep at night. How did you get in here? The window. Do you do that a lot? Um, Just the past couple of months. When Bella formally meets the rest of the Cullens, she gets a mixed reception from his quote-unquote siblings. Some are rightfully opposed to this union and would later be proven right as future events unfold and she ends up causing trouble for the entire family. Although Twilight is a beloved movie, it's a classic example of a girl forcefully inserting herself into a situation that in the end did cause her harm. She has to flee to Phoenix and ends up being attacked and bitten by a rivaling vampire. And the lesson in this is not just the obvious one of staying away from guys who tell you to stay away from them, but also don't force situations if you have to fight and twist and turn and go through all sorts of contortions to enter into a relationship with someone. Because that relationship probably isn't something that's meant for you. Real life lessons, don't be a Bella Swan. I trust you. And I don't know if I'll talk about the other Twilight movies as I go through my teen romance movies series, but in the next installment, New Moon, Edward does dump Bella because he didn't like that he put her in danger and his initial instincts were right. Then, Bella starts doing all of the stupid shit to essentially try to see him again. And when Edward thinks that she's offed herself, now he wants to die too proving yet again how toxic this union is. So what are your thoughts about Twilight and what were some of your observations about Edward and Bella's relationship? Drop some comments down below. Also, please like, share, and subscribe for more. Signing off now, your friend, Dom.